The age of consent across Australia now, thankfully, is 16 for males and females, regardless of the sexual partner that they have, be it a male or female partner. So it's 16 across the board now, which is fantastic. And consent should technically be black or white. But somewhere in amongst all of this crazy world, young people see consent as very grey and very blurred. Does anyone want to have a guess as to why that may be? or what their perception is around that. Why is something that should be a simple yes or no now becoming really complex? They don't know if they want to, yes? They might change their mind. Yep, so wanting to and then not wanting to, absolutely. Yeah, spot on. So something that should be really simple is made often quite complex by either a lack of self-esteem, not actually knowing what it is that I want or I don't want, and then we throw drug and alcohol into the mix and it becomes a whole new ball game all over again. So our law currently states that uh, anyone under the influence of drugs and or alcohol is unable to give legal consent to sexual behaviours. That being that any amount of drug or alcohol impacts on the individual's ability to make a clear, clarified decision around sex and sexual behaviours which again becomes problematic because if you think about the role modelling that young people are getting around consent, they're seeing a lot of adults who are having sex only under the influence of alcohol. How many times have you heard people go, oh, I can only have sex when I've had a few drinks? That's the message that's being put across to young people. Or they watch films, video clips, movies, TV shows, sex is happening under the influence of drugs and alcohol, making out that that's okay for young people to be doing that. And, you know, we're not the sex police. We can't get around to everybody and say, how many drinks have you had? Or, you know, how many cones have you had? You shouldn't be having sex. Our messaging to young people is you need to think about your own personal safety and well-being, And we just say, if there's been drugs or alcohol involved, take the sex out of the equation. A lot of the time, it's not necessarily what's happened um, at that night or at the, at the particular moment, it's waking up the next day with a lot of regret and a lot of, was I okay with what actually happened to me? Did I actually consent to that? Did I want that to happen? So it does become quite grey. So when we talk about consent, um, the previous slogan was no means no. And no still does mean no, don't get me wrong. If a young person says no, that's, I don't want that to happen. But we're now moving towards a yes is yes in the sense that if a young person is asking questions in that respectful, committed relationship, if the couple feel comfortable with each other, which they should if the healthy relationship is happening, to ask questions to check in with a partner. So we're like, if you're getting a yes, that yes is consent. Because when it comes to no is no, there's a lot of ways that an individual can say no without physically saying the word no. And body language is what really comes to mind there. So most of what we say when we communicate is about our body language and our tone. Only 7% of our communication message is the actual words that we speak. The rest is the tone in which we speak and the body language that we're giving off with those words that we're saying. So if a young person is in bed, for example, and um, the, the partner's trying to engage with them sexually and they're in the corner like this, and they haven't said no, is that body language saying yes? Goodness, no. As opposed to somebody who's got an open posture, more relaxed, responding to that other person's sexual touch, that's more of a yes. But it's about body language, it hasn't been about words. So that's where we're moving more um, in our line of work to yes is yes. If you're asking questions to check in with your partner to make sure that they're feeling safe, secure and okay with what's happening and you're getting yes responses, you're getting consent. So we talk to young people about this and questions that they can ask their partner, such as, do you feel comfortable with this? Are you okay if I touch you here? Would you like me to proceed? If they're getting yes, they're getting consent. Can you see the difference between the two notions? Although they may not say, would you like me to proceed? No. <laughs> Probably not, probably not with a young person, but we're, we're trying, we're really trying. Yeah. Yeah, we might. Maybe you can get them to think of another word. <laughs> so, when it comes to consent, this is a, a FRIES acronym that really works. This can be a teachable moment the next time you're having fries at McDonald's, you'd be like, hey, I know something about these fries and it's called consent. 
So when it comes to fries, consent should be freely given. So no one should ever feel forced or pressured or coerced into giving their consent, especially when it comes to sex and sexual relationships. Consent is reversible. So as you mentioned before, that is, yeah, I might agree to the start of a sexual act. I might feel in the moment and feel comfortable. But after a few moments of like kissing and heavy petting, all of a sudden I'm like, oh, nah, this is too fast or this isn't what I wanted to do. So consent can always be reversed or taken back. You can always say no and that other person has to stop. Otherwise, it's unwanted sexual contact. Consent should be informed. What is it that I'm actually giving my consent to? And I think this is where young people can sometimes um, struggle with this notion of consent because we also talk about you're giving consent to people to act on your behalf every day. Every time you sign a piece of paper, you're giving somebody consent to do something on your behalf. All of us would be guilty of you know, banking contracts or insurance contracts where we've signed on the dotted line and it says, have you read the terms and conditions? We tick the yes box and... <laughs> Do you think I spent an hour reading terms and conditions? No. So again, it's that role modelling and practising with young people. What is it that you're actually giving your consent to? Is that informed consent? The consent should be enthusiastic. So we're like, yes is good, but a hell yeah is so much better in those sexual situations. We want to make sure that the young person is enthusiastic about that consent. Okay? If it's an enthusiastic yes, it's less likely to be a coerced yes. I think you can see the difference between those two things. And being specific. So when it comes to um, sexual acts, a young person, if they're giving consent specifically, might say, you know, I give consent or I want to perform oral sex, but I don't actually want to do full penetrative sex. Whatever the case may be, it's something to be negotiated between those young people. Good analogy that you can use, do you think, with young people? So next time you're all eating your Macca's fries, <laughs> pull out the teachable moment. Any questions on consent? Yeah, yeah come on. No, a lot, because it's actually quite often, I mean, I don't know get consent, but um, it's also about, sex is quite often about pushing boundaries, sometimes you're angry. Yeah. You know, if you, the young person hasn't yet experienced sex, it's obviously there's going to be some trepidation around whether they want or not. And it's actually quite, I imagine it's quite a big step to say yes, but not necessarily know because what you're, you're saying actually yes to. You're almost sort of like um, committing, committing, in, committing to it. It's much more a, a plane of push me, pull me going on, which is, you know, it's there in adult relationships and sexual relationships as well. It's just, you know, it's, it's seldom. Yeah. So it's, it's, I guess there's no harm in teaching young people to say that you need to express what you want, but in reality, is something quite different happening, isn't it? It's quite, you know, is a pleasurable moan the same as a, as a give, do, do some more? You know what I mean? Like, sure. and, and yes, it's actually very off putting. Yeah. Because a lot of sex is about t touching and feeling your way through, and this yeah. is working, oh, this is getting where I want to go. And I think the spontaneity of those behaviours as well, so whereas yes, no. kind of pausing for those yes-no moments, a lot of young people are like, that's just going to take the passion out of the moment, that's not spontaneous. Yeah, yeah, you're Very right. Okay. But I think that's, again, where that body language becomes so important. Like, if you're responding to somebody's, you know, if it's pleasurable, you're more likely to be responding to them as well and touching them in sexual ways as opposed to you not feeling comfortable and just sort of laying there like a bit of a starfish, like, oh, just hurry up and get this over. So I think it is about reading body language and people's cues as much as it is. And perhaps go back to the self-esteem and if someone doesn't feel right in you and you can't mm. sit with that and sort of push through that, then mm. that, that, that's actually a feeling you don't... But I imagine there are times when things feel very good yeah. yeah. in the moment. Oh, absolutely. And then to have, but to have the confidence yeah. to okay, I want to yeah. carry on with this. So it's about thinking about consent in advance, actually. It's probably... Yeah. You know, like, I don't imagine a lot of... Um, not a lot, but a big, big fun of it. So, but, you know, like, in retrospect, I didn't agree to that. Yeah. And it was actually wasn't necessarily a bad experience. Um, yeah, sure. I guess. One of the one of the tricks that I do, particularly with things like educating young people, putting on a condom, it's a great way of looking at it, is getting people to be comfortable with the process of how you do things. And this is just a mechanical aspect of putting on a condom. And quite often young people do not know how to do this, so quite often the attention is really intense. 
But part of it is just getting used to the process, getting used to the feel, getting used to doing things, getting used to it so that when it comes down to putting a condom on within a relationship, you're not fumbling in the dark trying to work out, I have no idea which end this goes on to. So what happens is a person becomes fluid in their conversational tone and their actions. They can do this quickly, easily. They feel confident within themselves. And I think part of the conversation about consent is that a person's got in their head where, where they want to go with this and what sort of script, and it's a script that they can work out within their own head of going, oh look, you know, you, you seem to be enjoying that, but I actually am not okay with that at the moment. Can we just move on from so- onto something else? However, whatever conversation people have, if they've got a confident sort of way of having negotiating that conversation, either through works or, or actions, then I think they'll feel more comfortable and confident within that whole sexual activity of going, I'll go this far, I won't go that far, I might give that one a go. So getting them used to having it in their head what paths they go down. And uh, I guess that's one of the things that some young people have sort of come to us and said, or that young people might ask, significant people is like, when should I have sex? And our response to that, or my personal response to that is, when there's something in it for you. It's about you having those pleasurable experiences as much as it is about you giving your partner those pleasurable experiences. So when it feels right for you, when you feel like you're gonna get something out of that, you're wanting to do that for yourself, for those experiences, not because of somebody else's pleasure. Does that make sense? Because I think that puts it in perspective a lot for young people and, you know, and it is what they're thinking.